Harriet Elizabeth Beecher Stowe, June 14, 1811 to July 1, 1896, was an American abolitionist and author. She came from the Beecher family, a famous religious family, and is best known for her novel Uncle Tom's Cabin, 1852, which depicts the harsh conditions for enslaved African Americans. The book reached millions as a novel and play, and became influential in the United States and Great Britain, energizing anti-slavery forces in the American North, while provoking widespread anger in the South. Stowe wrote 30 books, including novels, three travel memoirs, and collections of articles and letters. She was influential for both her writings and her public stances on social issues of the day. Life and work Harriet Elizabeth Beecher was born in Litchfield, Connecticut, on June 14, 1811. She was the seventh of thirteen children born to outspoken Calvinist preacher Lyman Beecher. Her mother was his first wife, Roxana Foote, a deeply religious woman who died when Stowe was only five years old. Roxana's maternal grandfather was General Andrew Ward of the Revolutionary War. Her notable siblings included a sister, Catherine Beecher, who became an educator and author, as well as brothers who became ministers, including Henry Ward Beecher, who became a famous preacher and abolitionist, Charles Beecher, and Edward Beecher. Harriet enrolled in the Hartford Female Seminary run by her older sister Catherine. There she received a traditional academic education, usually only reserved for males at the time, with a focus in the classics, including studies of languages and mathematics. Among her classmates was Sarah P. Willis, who later wrote under the pseudonym Fanny Fern. In 1832, at the age of 21, Harriet Beecher moved to Cincinnati, Ohio to join her father, who had become the president of Lane Theological Seminary. There, she also joined the Semi Cullen Club, a literary salon and social club whose members included the Beecher sisters, Caroline Lee Hentz, Salmon P. Chase, future governor of the state and secretary of treasury under President Lincoln, Emily Blackwell, and others. Cincinnati's trade and shipping business on the Ohio River was booming, drawing numerous migrants from different parts of the country, including many free blacks, as well as Irish immigrants who worked on the state's canals and railroads. Areas of the city had been wrecked in the Cincinnati riots of 1829, when ethnic Irish attacked blacks, trying to push competitors out of the city. Beecher met a number of African Americans who had suffered in those attacks, and their experience contributed to her later writing about slavery. Riots took place again in 1836 and 1841, driven also by native-born anti-abolitionists. It was in the literary club that she met Calvin Ellis Stowe, a widower who was a professor at the seminary. The two married on January 6, 1836. He was an ardent critic of slavery, and the Stowes supported the Underground Railroad, temporarily housing several fugitive slaves in their home. Most slaves continued north to secure freedom in Canada. The Stowes had seven children together, including twin daughters. Topic: <inaudible> Uncle Tom's Cabin and Civil War. In 1850, Congress passed the Fugitive Slave Law, prohibiting assistance to fugitives and strengthening sanctions even in free states. At the time, Stowe had moved with her family to Brunswick, Maine, where her husband was now teaching at Bowdoin College. Their home near the campus is protected as a National Historic Landmark. Stowe claimed to have a vision of a dying slave during a communion service at Brunswick's First Parish Church, which inspired her to write his story. However, what more likely allowed her to empathize with slaves was the loss of her 18 month old son, Samuel Charles Stowe. She even stated the following Having experienced losing someone so close to me, I can sympathize with all the poor, powerless slaves at the unjust auctions. You will always be in my heart Samuel Charles Stowe." On March 9, 1850, Stowe wrote to Gamaliel Bailey, editor of the weekly anti-slavery journal The National Era, that she planned to write a story about the problem of slavery. "'I feel now that the time has come when even a woman or a child who can speak a word for freedom and humanity is bound to speak. I hope every woman who can write will not be silent. Shortly after in June, 1851, when she was 40, the first installment of her Uncle Tom's Cabin was published in serial form in the newspaper The National Era. She originally used the subtitle, The Man That Was A Thing, but it was soon changed to Life Among the Lowly. Installments were published weekly from June 5, 1851, to April 1, 1852. 
For the newspaper serialization of her novel, Stowe was paid $400. Uncle Tom's Cabin was published in book form on March 20, 1852, by John P. Jewett with an initial print run of 5,000 copies. Each of its two volumes included three illustrations and a title page designed by Hammett Billings. In less than a year, the book sold an unprecedented 300,000 copies. By December, as sales began to wane, Jewett issued an inexpensive edition at 37.5 cents each to stimulate sales. According to Daniel R. Lincoln, the goal of the book was to educate Northerners on the realistic horrors of the things that were happening in the South. The other purpose was to try to make people in the South feel more empathetic towards the people they were forcing into slavery. The book's emotional portrayal of the effects of slavery on individuals captured the nation's attention. Stowe showed that slavery touched all of society, beyond the people directly involved as masters, traders and slaves. Her novel added to the debate about abolition and slavery, and aroused opposition in the South. In the South, Stowe was depicted as out of touch, arrogant and guilty of slander. Within a year, 300 babies in Boston alone were named Eva, one of the book's characters, and a play based on the book opened in New York in November. Southerners quickly responded with numerous works of what are now called anti-Tom novels, seeking to portray Southern society and slavery in more positive terms. Many of these were bestsellers, although none matched the popularity of Stowe's work, which set publishing records. After the start of the Civil War, Stowe traveled to the capital, Washington, D.C., where she met President Abraham Lincoln on November 25, 1862. Stowe's daughter, Hattie, reported, It was a very droll time that we had at the White House I assure you. I will only say now that it was all very funny and we were ready to explode with laughter all the while." What Lincoln said is a minor mystery. Her son later reported that Lincoln greeted her by saying, "'So you are the little woman who wrote the book that started this great war." Her own accounts are vague, including the letter reporting the meeting to her husband. "'I had a real funny interview with the president.'" <laughs> later years A year after the war, Stowe purchased property in Florida. In response to a newspaper article in 1873 she wrote, I came to Florida the year after the war and held property in Duval County ever since. In all this time I have not received even an incivility from any native Floridian. Stowe is controversial for her support of Elizabeth Campbell, Duchess of Argyle, whose father-in-law decades before was a leader in the Highland Clearances, the transformation of the remote highlands of Scotland from a militia-based society to an agricultural one that supported far fewer people. The newly homeless moved to Canada, where very bitter accounts appeared. It was Stowe's assignment to refute them using evidence the Duchess provided, in Letter 17 Volume 1 of her travel memoir Sunny Memories of Foreign Lands. Stowe was vulnerable when she seemed to defend the cruelties in Scotland as eagerly as she attacked the cruelties in the American South. In 1868, Stowe became one of the first editors of Hearth and Home magazine, one of several new publications appealing to women. She departed after a year. Stowe campaigned for the expansion of married women's rights, arguing in 1869 that t he position of a married woman is, in many respects, precisely similar to that of the Negro slave. She can make no contract and hold no property, whatever she inherits or earns becomes at that moment the property of her husband. Though he acquired a fortune through her, or though she earned a fortune through her talents, he is the sole master of it, and she cannot draw a penny. I and the English common law a married woman is nothing at all. She passes out of legal existence. In the 1870s, Stowe's brother Henry Ward Beecher was accused of adultery, and became the subject of a national scandal. Unable to bear the public attacks on her brother, Stowe again fled to Florida but asked family members to send her newspaper reports. Through the affair, she remained loyal to her brother and believed he was innocent. After her return to Connecticut, Mrs. Stowe was among the founders of the Hartford Art School, which later became part of the University of Hartford. Following the death of her husband, Calvin Stowe, in 1886, Harriet started rapidly to decline in health. By 1888, the Washington Post reported that as a result of dementia the 77-year-old Stowe started writing Uncle Tom's Cabin over again. She imagined that she was engaged in the original composition, and for several hours every day she industriously used pen and paper, inscribing passages of the book almost exactly word for word. 
This was done unconsciously from memory, the authoress imagining that she composed the matter as she went along. To her diseased mind the story was brand new, and she frequently exhausted herself with labor which she regarded as freshly created. Mark Twain, a neighbor of Stowe's in Hartford, recalled her last years in the following passage of his autobiography. Her mind had decayed, and she was a pathetic figure. She wandered about all the day long in the care of a muscular Irish woman. Among the colonists of our neighborhood the doors always stood open in pleasant weather. Mrs. Stowe entered them at her own free will, and as she was always softly slippered and generally full of animal spirits, she was able to deal in surprises, and she liked to do it. She would slip up behind a person who was deep in dreams and musings and fetch a war whoop that would jump that person out of his clothes. And she had other moods. Sometimes we would hear gentle music in the drawing room and would find her there at the piano singing ancient and melancholy songs with infinitely touching effect. Modern researchers now speculate that at the end of her life Harriet was suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Harriet Beecher Stowe died on July 1, 1896, at age 85 in Hartford, Connecticut. She is buried in the historic cemetery at Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts. Topic: Legacy. Topic: Landmarks. Multiple landmarks are dedicated to the memory of Harriet Beecher Stowe and are located in several states including Ohio, Florida, Maine and Connecticut. The locations of these landmarks represent various periods of her life such as her father's house where she grew up, and where she wrote her most famous work. The Harriet Beecher Stowe House in Cincinnati, Ohio, is the former home of her father Lyman Beecher on the former campus of the Lane Seminary. Her father was a preacher who was greatly affected by the pro-slavery Cincinnati riots of 1836. Harriet Beecher Stowe lived here until her marriage. It is open to the public and operated as a historical and cultural site, focusing on Harriet Beecher Stowe, the Lane Seminary and the Underground Railroad. The site also presents African American history. In the 1870s and 1880s, Stowe and her family wintered in Mandarin, Florida, now a neighborhood of modern consolidated Jacksonville, on the St. Johns River. Stowe wrote Palmetto Leaves while living in Mandarin, arguably an eloquent piece of promotional literature directed at Florida's potential northern investors at the time. The book was published in 1873 and describes Northeast Florida and its residents. In 1874, Stowe was honored by the governor of Florida as one of several northerners who had helped Florida's growth after the war. In addition to her writings inspiring tourists and settlers to the area, she helped establish a church and a school, and she helped promote oranges as a major state crop through her own orchards. The school she helped establish in 1870 was an integrated school in Mandarin for children and adults. This predated the national movement toward integration by more than a half century. The marker commemorating the Stowe family is located across the street from the former site of their cottage. It is on the property of the community club, at the site of a church where Stowe's husband once served as a minister. The Church of Our Savior is an Episcopal church founded in 1880 by a group of people who had gathered for Bible readings with Professor Calvin E. Stowe and his famous wife. The house was constructed in 1883 which contained the Stowe Memorial stained glass window, created by Lewis Comfort Tiffany. The Harriet Beecher Stowe House in Brunswick, Maine, is where Stowe lived when she wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. Her husband was teaching theology at nearby Bowdoin College, and she regularly invited students from the college and friends to read and discuss the chapters before publication. Future Civil War general, and later governor, Joshua Chamberlain was then a student at the college and later described the setting. On these occasions, Chamberlain noted, a chosen circle of friends, mostly young, were favored with the freedom of her house, the rallying point being, however, the reading before publication, of the successive chapters of her Uncle Tom's Cabin, and the frank discussion of them. In 2001 Bowdoin College purchased the house, together with a newer attached building, and was able to raise the substantial funds necessary to restore the house. It is now open to the public. The Harriet Beecher Stowe House in Hartford, Connecticut, is the house where Stowe lived for the last 23 years of her life. It was next door to the house of fellow author Mark Twain. In this 5,000 square feet 460 square meters cottage-style house, there are many of Beecher Stowe's original items and items from the time period. In the research library, which is open to the public, there are numerous letters and documents from the Beecher family. 
The house is open to the public and offers house tours on the half hour. In 1833, during Stowe's time in Cincinnati, the city was afflicted with a serious cholera epidemic. To avoid illness, Stowe made a visit to Washington, Kentucky, a major community of the era just south of Maysville. She stayed with the Marshall Key family, one of whose daughters was a student at Lane Seminary. It is recorded that Mr. Key took her to see a slave auction, as they were frequently held in Maysville. Scholars believe she was strongly moved by the experience. The Marshall Key home still stands in Washington. Key was a prominent Kentuckian. His visitors also included Henry Clay and Daniel Webster. The Uncle Tom's Cabin historic site is part of the restored Don settlement at Dresden, Ontario, which is 20 miles east of Algonac, Michigan. The community for freed slaves founded by the Rev. Josiah Henson and other abolitionists in the 1830s has been restored. There's also a museum. Henson and the Don Settlement provided Stowe with the inspiration for Uncle Tom's Cabin. Topic honors Stowe is honored with a feast day on the liturgical calendar of the Episcopal Church USA on July 1. In 1986, Stowe was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. On June 13, 2007, the United States Postal Service issued a 75 Distinguished Americans series postage stamp in her honor. Harris Stowe State University in St. Louis, Mo is named for Stowe and William Torrey Harris. In early 2010, Stowe was proposed by the Ohio Historical Society as a finalist in a statewide vote for inclusion in Statuary Hall at the United States Capitol. Topic selected works Topic Books Topic Novels Uncle Tom's Cabin, or, Life Among the Lowly. The National Era. June 5, 1851, first two chapters of serialized version which ran for 40 numbers, digitsed version of entire series by University of Virginia, Uncle Tom's Cabin, or, Life Among the Lowly. Boston and Cleveland, J.P. Jewett, Jewett, Proctor and Worthington, 1852, published in two volumes, stereotyped by Hobart and Robbins, one volume 1853 edition is hosted by Hathitrust, Uncle Tom's Cabin, the great American novel, to be completed in six weekly numbers, price one penny each Saturday. London, Vickers. August 7, 1852. Title from first number, Uncle Tom's Cabin, or, The History of a Christian Slave. London, Partridge and Oakey, 1852. First English Illustrated Edition, digital copy hosted by Hathitrust, Dread, A Tale of the Great Dismal Swamp. Boston, Phillips, Sampson, 1856. Our Charlie and What to Do with Him. Boston, Phillips, Sampson, 1858. The Minister's Wooing. New York, Derby and Jackson, 1859. The Pearl of Oars Island, A Story of the Coast of Maine. Boston, Tickner and Fields, 1862. Ebook available at Project Gutenberg, Agnes of Sorrento. Boston, Tickner and Fields, 1862. Digital copy hosted by archive.org, Aldtown Folks. Montreal, London, Dawson, Sampson Lowe, Sun and Marston, 1869. Digitalized version at UPenn Digital Library, Little Pussy Willow. Boston, Fields, Osgood, 1870, 1871 Printing available at Google Books, Pink and White Tyranny, a society novel. Boston, Roberts Brothers, 1871. Ebook available at Project Gutenberg, My Wife and I, or, Harry Henderson's History. Boston, New York, Houghton, Mifflin & Co., J.B. Ford & Company, 1871. Digital copy hosted by Hathitrust, six of one by half a dozen of the other. Boston, Roberts Brothers, 1872. Co-authored with Adeline D.T. Whitney, Lucretia P. Hale, Frederick W. Loring, Frederick B. Perkins and Edward E. Hale, digital copy at Google Books, We and Our Neighbors, or, The Records of an Unfashionable Street, a novel. New York, J.B. Ford and Company, 1875, sequel to My Wife and I, digital copy hosted by Hathitrust, topic drama The Christian Slave. A drama founded on a portion of Uncle Tom's Cabin. Boston, Phillips, Sampson and Company, 1855, closet drama or reading version based on Uncle Tom's Cabin, digital copy hosted by Hathitrust, topic poetry religious poems. Boston, Tickner and Fields, 1867. Digital copy hosted by Google Books, topic nonfiction A New England Sketchbook. Lowell, Mass., A. Gilman, 1834. As Harriet E. Beecher, Earthly Care, A Heavenly Discipline. Boston, The American Tract Society. C.A., 1845. A New Year's Dream. 
The Christian Keepsake, and Missionary Annual, for MDCCCXLIX. N. L., Brower, Hayes & Co., 1849. History of the Edmondson Family. Andover, Mass., the author, 1852, self-published book to raise funds to educate Emily and Mary Edmondson, former slaves redeemed by a public subscription in 1848, supported by Stowe, a key to Uncle Tom's Cabin, presenting the original facts and documents upon which the story is founded together with corroborative statements verifying the truth of the work. Boston, Cleveland, London, John P. Jewett and Co., Jewett, Proctor and Worthington, Lowe and Company, 1853, digital copy hosted by Hathi Trust, Sunny Memories of Foreign Lands. Boston, New York, Phillips, Sampson, and Company, J.C. Derby, 1854. Digital copy hosted by Hathi Trust, Volume 1 and Volume 2, First Geography for Children. Boston, Phillips, Sampson and Co., 1855. Digital copy hosted by Hathi Trust, Stories About Our Dogs. Edinburgh, William P. Nimmo. 1865, Nimmo's Sixpenny Juvenile Series, digital copy hosted by University of Florida's George A. Smathers Library, House and Home Papers. Boston, Tickner and Fields, 1865. Published under the name of Christopher Crowfield, digital copy hosted by Archive.org, Little Foxes. Boston, Tickner and Fields, 1866. Published under the name of Christopher Crowfield, digital copy hosted by Archive.org, Men of Our Times, or, Leading Patriots of the Day. Being narratives of the lives and deeds of statesmen, generals, and orators. Including biographical sketches and anecdotes of Lincoln, Grant, Garrison, Sumner, Chase, Wilson, Greeley, Farragut, Andrew, Colfax, Stanton, Douglas, Buckingham, Sherman, Sheridan, Howard, Phillips and Beecher. Hartford, Connecticut, New York, Hartford Publishing Co., J.D. Denison, 1868. Digital copy hosted by Hathi Trust, The Chimney Corner. Boston, Tickner and Fields, 1868. Published under the name of Christopher Crowfield, digital copy hosted by Hathi Trust, asterisk the American Woman's Home, or, Principles of Domestic Science Being a Guide to the Formation and Maintenance of Economical, Healthful, Beautiful, and Christian Homes. New York, Boston, J.B. Ford & Company, H.A. Brown & Co., 1869. Written with Catherine Beecher, digitized version at MSU Historic American Cookbook Project, textbook version, Principles of Domestic Science as Applied to the Duties and Pleasures of Home, a textbook for the use of young ladies in schools, seminaries, and colleges. New York, J.B. Ford & Company, 1870. Digital copy hosted by Archive.com, The Lives and Deeds of Our Self-Made Men. Hartford, Connecticut, Worthington, Dustin, 1872. Digital copy at Archive.org, Lady Byron Vindicated, A History of the Byron Controversy, from its beginning in 1816 to the present time. Boston, Fields, Osgood, & Co., 1870, ebook available at Project Gutenberg, Palmetto Leaves. Boston, J.R. Osgood & Company, 1873. Digital copy is hosted by Archive.org, Woman in Sacred History, a series of sketches drawn from scriptural, historical, and legendary sources. New York, J.B. Ford & Company, 1873. Digital copy of 1874 printing is hosted at Archive.org, Footsteps of the Master. New York, J.B. Ford & Company, 1877. Digital copy hosted by Hathi Trust. Bible Heroines, being narrative biographies of prominent Hebrew women in the patriarchal, national, and Christian eras, giving views of women in sacred history, as revealed in the light of the present day. New York, Fords, Howard, and Hulbert, 1878. Digital copy hosted by Hathi Trust, Poganuk People, Their Loves and Lives. New York, Fords, Howard, and Hulbert, 1878. Digital copy hosted at Hathi Trust, He's Coming Tomorrow. Boston, James H. Earle, published between 1889-83, digital copy of 1901 edition published by Fleming N. Ray Vale hosted by Archive.org, A Dog's Mission, or, The Story of the Old Avery House and Other Stories. New York, Fords, Howard, and Hulbert, 1880. Collection of children's stories consisting of A Dog's Mission, Lulu's Pupil, The Daisy's First Winter, Our Charlie, Take Care of the Hook, A Talk About Birds, The Nest in the Orchard, and The Happy Child, digital copy hosted by Hathi Trust. Topic collections Topic During Stowe's lifetime The Mayflower, or, Sketches of Scenes and Characters Among the Descendants of the Pilgrims. 
New York, Harper and Brothers, 1843. Consists of the stories, Love vs. Law, The T. Rose, Trials of a Housekeeper, Little Edward, Let Every Man Mind His Own Business, Cousin William, Uncle Tim, Aunt Mary, Frankness, The Sabbath, So Many Calls, The Canal Boat, Feeling, The Sempstress, Old Father Morris, Digital Copy Hosted by Archive.org, Uncle Sam's Emancipation, Earthly Care, A Heavenly Discipline, and Other Sketches. Philadelphia, W.P. Hazard, 1853. Consists of the following sketches, account of Mrs. Beecher Stowe and her family, Uncle Sam's Emancipation, Earthly Care, A Heavenly Discipline, A Scholar's Adventure in the Country, Children, The Two Bibles, Letter from Maine, Number 1, Letter from Maine, Number 2, Christmas, or, The Good Fairy, digital copy hosted at Hathitrust, Evergreen, being the smaller works of Mrs. H. Beecher Stowe. Belfast, Alex. S. Maine, 1853. A collection of works consisting of, The New Year's Gift, The Bible, The Source of Sure Comfort, Make to Yourselves Drens, Earthly Care, A Heavenly Discipline, So Many Calls, Learn of Children. Anti-slavery meeting in Glasgow, letter from Mrs. Stowe to Dr. Wardlaw, Queer Little People. Boston, Tickner and Fields, 1868. Published under the name of Christopher Crowfield, digital copy hosted by Hathitrust, consists of the following stories, The Hen That Hatched Ducks, The Nutcracker of Nutcracker Lodge, The History of Tip Top, Miss Katie Did and Miss Cricket, Mother Magpie's Mixchief, The Squirrels That Live in a House, Hum, The Son of Buzz, Our Country Neighbors, Our Dogs, Dogs and Cats, Aunt Esta's Rules, Aunt Esta's Stories, Sir Walter Scott and His Dogs, and Country Neighbors Again, Old Town Fireside Stories. Boston, J.R. Osgood, 1872. Digital copy hosted by Hathitrust, consists of the stories, The Ghost in the Mill, The Sullivan Looking Glass, The Minister's Housekeeper, The Widow's Bandbox, Captain Kidd's Money, Ms. Elderkin's Pitcher, The Ghost in the Cap'n Brown House, Betty's Bright Idea, and other stories. New York, J.B. Ford and Company, 1876. In addition to the title story, the book includes Deacon Pitkin's Farm and The First Christmas of New England, digital copy hosted by Hathitrust, Sam Lawson's Alltown Fireside Stories. Boston, New York, Houghton, Mifflin and Company, 1887. Digital copy hosted by Hathitrust. Consists of, The Ghost in the Mill, The Sullivan Looking Glass, The Minister's Housekeeper, The Two Ados Bandbox, Captain Kidd's Money, Ms. Elderkin's Pitcher, The Ghost in the Cap'n Brown House, Colonel F's Shoebuckles, The Bull Fight. How to Fight the Devil, Laughin' in Meaton, Tom Toothacre's Ghost Story, The Parson's Horse Race, Old Town Fireside Talks of the Revolution, and A Student Sea Story, Life of Harriet Beecher Stowe compiled from her letters and journals by her son, Charles Edward Stowe. Boston, New York, Boston, New York, Houghton Mifflin and Company, 1889. Digital copy hosted at Hathitrust. Topic Notable posthumous collections The writings of Harriet Beecher Stowe. Boston, Houghton, Mifflin and Co., 1896-97. 17 volumes, a digital copy, hosted by Hathitrust, is linked to each volume number, volume. I and volume. 2. Uncle Tun's Cabin and A Key to Uncle Tom's Cabin in Two Volumes, Volume 3 and Volume 4, Dread, A Tale of the Great Dismal Swamp and Anti-Slavery Tales and Papers, and Life in Florida After the War, in Two Volumes, Volume V, The Minister's Wooing, Volume V, The Pearl of Oars Island, Volume 7, Agnes of Sorrento, Volume 8, Household Papers and Stories, Volume Ix and Volume 10, Aldtown Folks and Sam Lawson's Aldtown Fireside Stories in two volumes, Volume 11, Poganook Peoples and Pink and White Tyranny, Volume 12, My Wife and I, Volume 13, We and Our Neighbors, Volume 14, Stories, Sketches and Studies, Uncle Lot, Love vs. Law. The T. Rose, Aunt Mary, Frankness, Cousin William, Mrs. A. and Mrs. B., or, What She Thinks About It, Which Is the Liberal Man, The Canal Boat, Feeling, The Seamstress, Old Father Morris, The Coral Ring. Art and Nature, The New Year's Gift, Our Wood Lot in Winter, The Morning Veil, vale, New England Ministers, Betty's Bright Idea, Deacon Prickin's Farm, The First Christmas of New England and Little Foxes, Volume. 15, Religious Studies, Sketches and Poems, Volume. 16. Stories and Sketches for the Young, Queer Little People, Little Pussy Willow, The Minister's Watermelons, A Dog's Mission, Lulu's Pupil and the Daisy's First Winter, Vol. 17. Life and Letters of Harriet Beecher Stowe edited by Annie Field Catherine Sklar, ed. 1982. Harriet Beecher Stowe, Three Novels. 
New York, Library of America. ISBN 978-0-9404500-1 Contains Uncle Tom's Cabin, The Minister's Wooing and Aldtown Folks Topic. Stories and articles Cousin William. The Boston Weekly Magazine, 1 3, 19. September 22, 1838. Old Father Morris. Ladies Book, 145. October 1838. Flower Gathering. Southern Rose, 7 4, 60. October 13, 1838. Trials of a Housekeeper. Godey's Ladies Book, 18, 4. January 1839. Stealing Peaches. Episcopal Recorder, 16, 43, 172. January 19, 1839. Olympiana. Ladies Book, 241. June 1839. The Drunkard Reclaimed. I. New York Evangelist, 10, 48, 1. November 30, 1839, and The Drunkard Reclaimed. 2. New York Evangelist, 10, 40, 1. December 7, 1839. Art and Nature. Ladies Book, 241. December 1839. Mark Meriden. In E. Leslie, ed. 1841. Mr. and Mrs. Woodbridge with Other Tales. Providence, Rhode Island, Isaac H. Cady. p. 129. Digital copy hosted by Hathi Trust. The Dancing School. I. New York Evangelist, 14, 14, 1. April 6, 1843, and The Dancing School, 2. New York Evangelist, 14, 14, 1. April 13, 1843. The Family Circle. Christian Reflector. 6, 19. May 10, 1843. Feeling. New York Evangelist, 14, 16, 1. April 20, 1843. Now we see through a glass darkly. New York Evangelist, 14, 23, 1. June 8, 1843. The Bashful Cousin. Philanthropist. 7, 44, 4. July 12, 1843. So many calls. Ladies' Repository, and Gatherings of the West, 3 278. September 1843. The Nursery. I. The Youth's Companion. 17, 25, 98. October 26, 1843, and The Nursery, 2. The Youth's Companion. 17, 26, 102. November 2, 1843. Which is the Liberal Man? New York Evangelist, 15, 5, 1. February 1, 1844. Moralist and Miscellanist. Christian Reflector, 7, 6, 24. February 8, 1844. Mark Meriden. The Rover, a weekly magazine of tales, poetry, and engravings, 3, 24, 376. August 7, 1844. Tales and Sketches of Real Life. Little's Living Age, 2, 18, 339. September 14, 1844. Mary at the Cross. New York Evangelist, 15, 48, 192. November 28, 1844. Love and Fear. New York Evangelist, 15, 49, 196. December 5, 1844. Immediate Emancipation. A Sketch. The Cincinnati Weekly Herald and Philanthropist, 9, 21, 2. February 5, 1845. Ladies Department. Massachusetts Plowman and New England Journal of Agriculture, 4, 24, 4. March 15, 1845. Narrative. The Youth's Companion, 18, 48, 190. April 3, 1845. Slavery. Zion's Herald and Wesleyan Journal, 16, 15, 60. April 9, 1845. The Interior or Hidden Life. New York Evangelist, 16, 16, 1. April 17, 1845. Uncle Abel and Little Edatard. Zion's Herald and Wesleyan Journal, 16, 21, 1. May 21, 1845. 
a tradition of the Church of Laodicea. Episcopal Recorder, 23, 28, 109. September 27, 1845. Children. New York Evangelist, 17, 3, 1. January 15, 1846. What will the American people do? I. New York Evangelist, 17, 5, 1. January 29, 1846, and What will the American people do? 2. New York Evangelist, 17, 6, 1. February 5, 1846. Parents and Children. New York Observer and Chronicle. 24, 32, 128. August 8, 1946. The Way to Live on Christ. Christian Watchman. 28, 2, 1. January 8, 1847. Feelings. Godey's Magazine and Ladies Book, 36 to 102. February 1848. The Coral Ring. Godey's Magazine and Ladies Book, 36 to 340. June 1848. Moral Tales. I. The Youth's Companion, 22, 20, 77. September 14, 1848, and. Moral Tales 2. The Youth's Companion. 22 21, 81. September 21, 1848. Atonement. A Historical Reverie. New York Evangelist, 19 52, 1. December 28, 1948. A Little Child Shall Lead Them. Christian Parlor Magazine, 248. May 1, 1850. The Freeman's Dream, a Parable. National Era. IV 31, 121. August 1, 1850. Earthly Care a Heavenly Discipline. New York Evangelist, 21, 1, 1. August 1, 1850. Heinrich Stilling. New York Evangelist. 22, 6, 1. February 6, 1851. The Two Altars, or, Two Pictures in One Eye. New York Evangelist. 22, 24, 1. June 12, 1851, and The Two Altars, or, Two Pictures in One, 2. New York Evangelist. 22, 25, 1. June 19, 1851. Reprinted in a collection of leading abolitionists with facsimile signatures of the authors, Autographs for Freedom. London, Sampson Lowe, Son & Co., and John Castle, 1853. p. 88. Digited by archive.org, The True Story of Lady Byron's Life. The Atlantic Monthly, 24-295. September 1869. Topic see also Harriet Beecher Stowhouse, Cincinnati, Ohio, Origins of the American Civil War Beecher Family Topic Notes Topic Further reading Adams, Bluford, the 18th of December 2014. A Word or Two on the Other Side, Harriet Beecher Stowe in the Debate Over Women's Health. ESQ, A Journal of the American Renaissance. 64, 593-633. doi, 10.1353, ESQ.2014.0019. ISSN 1935-021X. Retrieved 20 September 2018. DiMaggio, Kenneth 2014. Uncle Tom's Cabin, Global Best Seller, Anti-Slave Narrative, Imperialist Agenda. Global Studies Journal, 7 1. Retrieved 20 September 2018. Hedrick, Joan D. August 1997. Harriet Beecher Stowe. In Richard Copley. Prospects for the Study of American Literature, A Guide for Scholars and Students. NYU Press. pp. 112-32. ISBN 978-0-8147-4698-1. Retrieved 20 September 2018. Hedrick, Joan D. 1994. Harriet Beecher Stowe, A Life. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-506639-5. Retrieved 30 June 2011. Holliger, Andrea the 20th of March 2015. America's Culture of Servitude at War, The Servant Problem, The Soldier Problem, and Harriet Beecher Stowe's House and Home Papers. ESQ, A Journal of the American Renaissance. 61, 1, 37-72. doi, 10.1353, ESQ.2015.0004. ISSN 1935-021X. 
Retrieved the 20th of September 2018. Kello, Margaret M. R. November 2013. Women and Abolitionism in the United States: Recent Historiography. PDF. History Compass. 11 11 1008 1020 doi 10.1111/hic3.12100 issn 1478-0542 retrieved the 20th of September 2018 klein rachel n the 1st of October 2001 harriet beecher stowe and the domestication of free labor ideology legacy 18 2 135-152 doi.10.1353, leg.2001.0026. ISSN 1534-0643. Retrieved 20 September 2018. Coaster, Nancy. Harriet Beecher Stowe, A Spiritual Life Eerdmans, 2014. pp. she, 371. Nichols, Ann, 2016. Harriet Beecher Stowe's Woman in Sacred History, Biblical Criticism, Evolution, and the Maternal Ethic. Religion and Literature. 47 3. Retrieved 20 September 2018. Pelletier, Kevin 2013. David Walker, Harriet Beecher Stowe, and the Logic of Sentimental Terror. African American Review. 46 2, 255-269. ISSN 1945-6182. Retrieved 20 September 2018. Topic external links Harriet Beecher Stowe at Encyclopedia Britannica Harriet Beecher Stowe's Cat Calvin Harriet Beecher Stowe on IMDb Works by Harriet Beecher Stowe at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Harriet Beecher Stowe at Internet Archive Works by Harriet Beecher Stowe at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin, an electronic edition of the National Era version, edited by textual scholar Wesley Raba. This is the first edition of the novel to be based on the original text published in the National Era Uncle Tom's Cabin and American Culture, a multimedia archive edited by Stephen Railton about the Stowe's novel's place in American history and society Harriet Beecher Stowe House and Center, Stowe's adulthood home in Hartford, Connecticut Harriet Beecher Stowe Society, scholarly organization dedicated to the study of the life and works of Harriet Beecher Stowe The online books page University of Pennsylvania Life of Harriet Beecher Stowe compiled from her letters and journals by her son Charles Edward Stowe Project Gutenberg Harriet Beecher Stowe's brief biography and works Uncle Tom's Cabin, the book that ignited a nation. How to Live on Christ, a pamphlet by Harriet Beecher Stowe, taken from her introduction to Christopher Dean's Religion as It Should Be or the Remarkable Experience and Triumphant Death of Anne Thane Peck published in 1847 Hudson Taylor sent a pamphlet using the words of this preface out to all the missionaries of the China Inland Mission in 1869. Barron's Book Notes for Uncle Tom's Cabin, The Author and Her Times Writings of Harriet Beecher Stowe, from CSPAN's American Writers, A Journey Through History Letter from Harriet Beecher Stowe to Horace Mann, 2 March 1852 from the Horace Mann Papers 3 at the Massachusetts Historical Society, retrieved June 4, 2012 Beecher Stowe Family Papers. Schlesinger Library, Radcliffe Institute, Harvard University. The 1849 cholera epidemic in Kentucky and Ohio and its connection to Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin Michaels, Deborah Harriet Beecher Stowe. National Women's History Museum, 2017.